So you, it would be correct to say either FA or COA here. But since COA is actually an address, let's write that. COA. Okay, so that packet goes off to the foreign agent. The foreign agent receives it, strips out this, uh, strips out the data, and then realizes that this is an IP packet with a header. And based on this HNA, we'll understand where to forward this data. Okay. Yes. So, it, so the, then the FA should know the HNA of each node in its network? Or? That's right. I mean, it has to know some kind of registration information about each node in its own network. Um, so the HNA is one way to do that. Um, so why don't we just, like if you're registering, and, oh, okay, it's, the, it's just the agents that are registering with each other. It's not the actual node transmitting to the agent? Right, that's fair to say. Otherwise, we could just give an actual IP address. Yeah. Like, is it? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then, if you leave the network, then you don't know anything. So, I mean, uh, there there will be a bunch of uh, mobile nodes within the foreign network, and all of them will have this because we're saying that um, the COA is the address of the foreign network. Uh, excuse me, the foreign agent. Uh, well, you can do it two ways. One way is this is the same address for for all uh, for all uh, mobile nodes within the foreign network, and then they determine what it is based on the HNA. Or uh, the COA is simply uh, there are many IP addresses that all correspond to the foreign the foreign agent, the FA, but each one represents a unique node within the foreign network. So, but FA needs to notify HNA when the uh, node changes location. So yeah, that's true. So, um, in any case, yeah, you're right. The foreign the foreign agent does need to know what the HNA is. It needs to report back when uh, when it leaves, or actually, it needs to report back when it enters and when it leaves. So, if we have a message going from the mobile to CN, so this was CN to mobile, right? So uh, that's, a, that's a good question. So this was a question we had last time. What happens in the other direction? So it turns out, so that's the CN to mobile direction. Mobile to CN. It turns out what happens usually is that um, the packet is sent directly from mobile to CN, and the uh, source field is forged with the agent. So the home net, the, the, uh, the mobile node will simply uh, directly to the CN and we'll just put its its uh, its, uh, its permanent IP address in the source in the source field uh, so this this is allowed and this is this is how it's done so in that case the intervention of the home agent is not required in the reverse link Circumstances under which that's not true, um, but they're but they are uh, they're kind of technical, and we won't get into them. So in the end, what we have is a network tunnel. So in the end, this packet, this entire um, unadulterated packet, will get from one end of the internet to the other. Uh, it just gets forwarded through the through the uh, through the the home agent. So a virtual network tunnel is set up from CN to mobile node. 
So as far as the CN is concerned, he's communicating directly with the mobile node, and in fact, his entire the CN's entire uh, IP packet that he's sending into the internet, with, intending it to reach the mobile node, will arrive. So this entire thing is just repackaged, and then at the other end, it's unwrapped, and that uh, that packet uh, with uh, with all its fields intact will arrive at the other end. So in fact, it's. Uh, um, uh, 